fact, I've got a large part of my family tree that is, well, some are Catholics, some are Mormons. Uh, I think it's only one Jehovah's Witness so far. Maybe that's increased. But, you know, as the further the family tree goes out, we got a lot of nothings. Got any nothings in your family somewhere out there? Um, this is a day, especially where there's enough unrest and things are have broken loose so to far, so far that that we've gone down so rapidly, especially in the last few years, yeah, and we've lost ground that we're never going to get back as far as I'm concerned. Now, I realize that there was other people that had more positive outlooks than I had that I talked with and so forth. And for a while, we had in this country the moral majority, and we had other sayings and groups that uh, would try and make uh, an impression and a headway and so forth and try and stand for what's right. Uh, but I'm thankful that the word of God does not change. Now, you notice that religions change. They become uh, like a chameleon. And they change according to the quote-unquote needs of society. Um, if you take a stand on anything doctrine-wise, oh, people get their hackles up. Um, I remember taking a, one particular church, and um, we were there for six, almost seven years. And uh, when I went there, they had not been very well taught, and it was a Baptist church. Um, the thing about it was that that's bad in some ways, but it's good in others, because many of the people were very teachable. When I, when I took that church, it even had um, not only deacons, it had deaconesses. You say, well, why would you take a church like that? Well, it gave me an opportunity to teach what the truth was. And I had some people that were flat out mad. Oh, were they mad? And I had some others. Some of the key families in that church that were deaconesses. And guess what? They understood what it said. And they were very gracious and accepting. And they wanted to grow and learn. And a number of things changed. Now, Jehovah's Witness had to change their 144,000 because there's more than 144,000 in Jehovah's Witness. So you got to make room for the more numbers, right? So we change that. And the Catholic Church, I've got a portion of my family that's Catholic also. And they have to change their doctrine to accommodate because they want to keep taking in everybody else. And so they make their doctrine more flexible you know, it used to be that when I was growing up and you heard about the term homosexual, that was a brand new term. I hadn't even heard it when I was a young person. It just wasn't around. Now look at it. And if you say anything about it, oh my, you're just not you know, all-inclusive. You don't understand. Hey, I'm just trying to go by this. See, but people don't want to go by this. And so you've got 
denominations, major denominations that will change their doctrinal stand because they still want to be inclusive, other groups of people and other belief systems. Um, and that happens. It, it, it's, it's amazing. It's also come, kind of amazing to the people that bow down uh, and follow the false gods of this age. Now, the gods really haven't changed, just the terminology. I mean, we wouldn't ever think of ourselves in America as a pagan nation, would we? Oh, that's for people down in the deepest, darkest jungles that are, have never been educated or anything like that. I mean, you know, and some of those people, if it's a male child, you can keep it. But if it's a female child, you take it out and you leave it in the jungle because you don't want it. You know, newborn baby. You, you, we would think that's horrible. And yet, and in the Old Testament, what did they have? They had Molech. Well, who was he? He was a false god where they would literally feed their newborn babies to the, a furnace of fire and incinerate them, burn them. Alive, Alive right. Oh, but what do we do? See, the sin hasn't ever changed. It's just the terminology. Now, some people are really offended by the truth. Now, you better be careful of that. Why? Well, ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let me put it like this. The truth will save you. Yeah, I, I can say that. The truth, the truth will save you. But some people don't believe the truth. Is it going to save them? No. It can. In fact, it already has. All they got to do is believe. Now, the Bible is the final authority. And the attack has always been against the scriptures. That started in the book of Genesis. And it started with the attack when Satan said, half, yea, half God said, challenged it right there, right, right out of the box, right from the start. Stick with your Bible. And... Don't just read it or listen to it or whatever. When you're in church, there's got to be a time when you read and study and apply verse with verse other than when you're here. You've got to study it out there where you are, where you live. Make time for it somehow in the busy schedule. Uh, the world is trying to just push in and choke out Christians. Um, 50 years ago, I would have never said we'd be at this point. I, I never would have believed it. And the thing that you hear on the news, they will tell you a half truth and then the What's the term they use for this? So the, they'll give you the news and then they have a, a, a commentator or, a, um, I don't know, some kind of a, a, a person with the bureau, news bureau, whoever, is supposed to be an expert. A what? An analyst? or It's not quite there. Anyway. And then they'll come along and they basically take what was said and shape it just a little better to suit their purposes and give it to you. That's what you're supposed to believe. 
It's not a matter of give truth, give accuracy. It's give something they want to put across. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Now, the word of God is a defense against that. Um, as we start off this evening, and for those of you who got your little scripture sheet there, Psalm 119 uh, and verse 89. And, you know, when I was in Bible college, I, I wondered why, when I, when I was studying the book of Revelation, why did they, why do they cut off people's heads during the tribulation period? What is that? And I never envisioned that there was, why do that? If you don't like, like them and they're your enemy, why don't you shoot them? Right? And the bad guys shooting the good guys. Excuse me. But no. With the Muslims, it's a brand new setup that's come along. And now I know what. See, the Bible is more accurate than we really think. And, you know, little things that you find all the way along, like Psalm 22 describes the crucifixion, which was a Roman form of death, not Jewish, Roman. And it was 700 years before its time where it was written in Psalms. 700 years passed before that was ever put into existence. See, this right here is truth. It's real. It's accurate. And everybody here ought to be on a crusade all by yourself of one for your own personal benefit to find out what truth is. Now, I'm not afraid to say that because if you're earnestly looking for it and you're reading this book right here, which is the written word of God, Jesus Christ in ink and paper, and you are a believer, and that means that uh, John 14, 26 works in you the same way it does in me. The Holy Spirit is the teacher when you read and study this, and the Holy Spirit of God will lead you into all truth. I'm not afraid to say, go for it, because we'll all end up on the same page. The only thing that will keep you from being on the same page is your own private sin or agenda, okay? Truth is truth. Truth is important. Uh, I value your souls, okay? Now, I don't, accru I don't care if I agree with you on every tidbit or wh where it's dotted or whether the T is crossed exactly at the right angle. I filled out a, uh, tried to, I try. I was in the church office the other day and I was trying to write down my signature because I'm going to get a rubber stamp made up with my signature on it. Why would I do that? Because my hand shakes so bad. I wrote my signature, what was it, Mrs. Lips, five times? I wrote it five times working at it and none of them looked like any of the others. Every time I write my signature, it looks different. I finally gave up and said, well, look between the two best ones and pick out one of them. I don't know. I can't make it come out any better. Um, things change. You have safety in the truth. Now, the most important thing you've got to guard and watch out for is your soul. And you best have that settled. Um, how much do you need to believe of this book? 
What, what needs to be your understanding level of it? There'll be some of you here that will grasp and understand more than others will. Okay? Some of that is based on your intake, and some of it is just the way God has blessed you, the way you think, the way you approach things. Some of you can analyze better than others. Some of you can assimilate it, put it together. Oh, wow, that sounds like over here. And you read the cross reference and it goes together and the light comes on. Or all of a sudden the light gets a little brighter. But you've got to be looking for truth. You, it, it, it's where there's safety. This is not a safe place that we're living in today. This ought to be. Do you, you ever remember that? radio broadcast that was on Christian radio decades ago. I, my wife and I used to listen to it. I don't even know if it's on anymore. It was called the Haven of Rest radio broadcast. Can you remember that? And man, that was a peaceful, relaxing, comforting. It was scripture. It was music that glorified the Lord. It wasn't this head banging stuff. I mean, it, it just built you up. Well, this place here needs to be a haven of rest where you come in and you can count on hearing what the truth is. Um, that's so important. Look at Psalm 119 and verse 89. Now, we're talking about it's God's eternal word, eternal word. Um, Right from the very get-go, the devil has challenged God's word. Uh, yea, hath God said. Psalm 119.89, oh, uh, forever, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's settled. It's not going to change. You can count on it. Now, let's back up a notch. God, let's start off with this. Basic, 101, God loves you. He's not out to trick you or deceive you or to get you to take a rabbit trail off in a different direction where you never get to the truth and you never get to the real issues of life. The devil will do that. The devil would like to lead you astray. And some people sell out cheap. Some kind of doctrine is given to them with some teaching, and some of this stuff is off the wall. Usually it, it comes from one verse of Scripture taken out of context, and then they build a whole belief system around it. Well, don't buy anything for just one verse. You got a whole Bible, and it better be where, the, where God says a lot about it, and you follow it. Where God says little about it and less is known about it, keep bathing that for your understanding with other scripture, cross-referencing it, till the Spirit of God will illuminate you. That's not revelation, that's illumination. In the right area to show you what that truth is. Um, this, these are incredible days that we live in. I want you people to be safe. You understand me? Uh, I'm going to heaven. No doubt about it. Now, some of you might doubt it, but I'm not doubting it. You know why? I'm not depending on me. I'm depending on him. And whosoever believeth in him is not condemned. Now, somebody might ask me, well, what about all these different beliefs? And like I said, my family, if you look at my extended family out there, I mean, I've got a lot of different belief systems out there. What do I think about? Are they going to heaven or hell? My answer is a scriptural answer. Whosoever hath the Son hath life. 
And whosoever hath not the Son of God hath not life. Um, how about your family? How about the people, close family, or further out there, or extended family, or whatever? Man, we got a lot of people that we know that are headed for an awful place. Jesus said it over and over again in the Gospels, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, I don't care how morally good somebody is, and if they're socially acceptable, and they get together round the Thanksgiving table, and they're just so nice to have around. By the way, did you ever notice how this country is getting rid of Thanksgiving? We're getting rid of it. It's everybody goes crazy over Halloween, and they go from Halloween to putting up Christmas displays in Walmart already. What, what, does anybody even remember what Thanksgiving was about? It was about Thanksgiving. But, you know, we want to get rid of that, too, because they're doing their best to destroy the history of where our land came from to begin with. That's part of it they want to get rid of. Wow. Um, look over at Mark chapter 9, Gospel of Mark chapter 9. That's not on our scripture list here, but Mark 9 in verse 24. And Mark 9, 24, and for those of you that are familiar with this, uh, there was this man that had a child that was, uh, in this case, possessed of a devil, a demon, or real problem. Disciples couldn't deal with it, couldn't handle it. But anyway, this isn't my, I'm not getting on to the whole story tonight, but just verse 24, he finds that he sees the Lord and he talks with the Lord about it. And notice what he says in verse 24. Um, well, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out. Um, now, it's one thing if we're hurting. But tell me the truth, parents. If your child is hurting, first place, you'd take it on you yourself if you could just get it off from them. You don't want them to hurt, but you'd go out of your way and do anything you could to help them, wouldn't you? That's, you know... By the way, that's covered under natural affection. There's some people that are, as the scripture says, without natural affection. Anyway, there's a lot that goes under that heading. But anyway, verse 24, cried out and said, uh, uh, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. You ever come to a place where you said, Lord, I want to believe it. You need to help me out with that. You ever read Romans chapter 8? And uh, where the Spirit helpeth and makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Um, there's truth and there's untruth. Go over very quickly St. Martha, uh, Luke chapter 16. I don't have that down either. Luke 16, and this classic, if you will, portion on hell. And if you got an old Schofield, by the way, I've been trying to put this in mothballs right here. 
because Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians is all falling out. I have to keep touching the pages in. And I write notes all around the outside, and the pages are so worn, the outside edge of the pages is falling off, and I can't even read my own notes anymore. Well, I got out my brandified new one, and I carried it into the men's Bible study last night. Yep, I did. Totally lost in that thing. It's the same thing. It's an old Schofield, King James Version. I got the deluxe one, though, Joe. I got large print because I can't see it anymore. And I got the thumb index because my hands shake. And I even got the red letter edition. Huh? Huh? But I noticed the, the thing I'm noticing about it, too, is it's heavier than this one. I got a problem carrying my own Bible anymore. That's bad. So I'm back on my old one tonight. My notes are falling off, though, on the edge of the page. But Luke chapter 16, I want to read just a couple of these verses because I've got people that I'm concerned about, and you've got people you're concerned about, and uh, my wife and I were, uh, well, it was more me than her, but I'm a big baby. She had to take care of me. <laughs> so we weren't here Wednesday night. It was past Wednesday night. We're homesick, but we watched you. Yes, we did. Brother Kurt handled the service very well. Thought everything went good. Brother Joe's preaching. And uh, I'm glad, brother, that you, the Lord helped to change your sense of direction. Now, that other message you got, we'll hear later sometime, but that's what we all needed. Got me to thinking. Uh, see, it'd do us some good to shed some tears sometime over some people. Some people that have a free will, they have the right to choose. And... We need to, like the scripture verse says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. And we need to be talking with these people and helping them in their reasoning and putting Christ before them. Now, I'd like to think that every person here was saved tonight, every single one of you. That'd be great. And if I knew that for sure, for sure, that would be great. But there's a whole lot of people out there that need to be in here. We can't make them believe, but we got to do our dead level best to give it to them as clearly and as plainly as we possibly can. Let me just hit a couple verses in here. Luke 16 Beginning in verse 19, Luke 16, 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. This guy had everything he needed and wanted. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeing Abraham afar off and, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Now, what happened to the uh, 
Old Testament saints when they die. Brother Joe called me on the phone. We had a little conversation about this. I like Joe. We get to, you know what I used to, we used to call this back in college? We get together and hash doctrine. That's what we called it, hashing doctrine. Get together and just talk about it and compare scripture. And man, what great fellowship. Um, but in the Old Testament, when, when somebody died that was a believer, if you will, where did they go? Same place Abraham went. His name's right there. Abraham's bosom. It was called the paradise side of hell. There's a gulf fix between it. Read the account. You can't get there and they couldn't get here. There was the torment side and the side where you were comforted. Uses that term. When Jesus Christ paid the sin debt, when he died on the cross and the sin debt was paid and he said, it is finished. Remember what happened? The rocks rent, veil in the temple, top to bottom, was torn in twain. And that thing must have weighed several tons. I don't know. But the dimensions of that thing, it wasn't like having a bed sheet hang up there. That was amazing. Uh, but Jesus Christ opened up the way. What happens now to uh, someone who is lost? They go straight to a place called hell. The paradise side of hell, if you will, Abraham's bosom, is empty. Nobody there. They're all gone. Why? Jesus opened up the way. But the thing about it is, you got somebody in that day looking over and saying, oh, yeah, I'd like to get over there. No way to get there. There's a great gulf fixed. They can't pass that way. You can't pass this way. That, folks, we're headed for a day um, when we're going to have to say goodbye permanently to some people that probably mean a lot to us. And we need to be working on not only praying, but doing something. I don't know... How it would start in your circumstances, I'm still working on what mine would be. But we got people that know, need to know about Jesus Christ and that the way to heaven has already been paid, but they got to know about it. And there's so much misinformation out there that it's awfully easy to get hooked up with the wrong advice. Um, I think about... Um, well, what is it in Jude? And in the book of Jude, it's talking about false teachers. Um, and in Jude chapter 1 and verse 13, it says this. Now, it's talking about false teachers. Those that change or pervert. They don't believe in Christ for who he is and what he is and what he's done. But it says in Jude chapter, of course, there's only one chapter, so Jude verse 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved, get this, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now, that's scary stuff right there. Um, hell right now, the lake of fire after the great white throne. And all of us here know people in our family, probably most of us, and other people that we know as well that don't know Jesus Christ. And don't go and try and shove religion down their throat or get into an argument. Don't get into an argument of trying to put what's right and wrong and standards and all the right. Just talk about Jesus Christ and that your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. He did it. 